Welcome back. You're watching Newsday. Social scientists and researchers have over time tried to establish a connection between Nigeria's oversized population, her dwindling production capacity, as well as mounting insecurity burden. According to those who are putting forward the argument, this convoluted situation gives rise to various levels of cutthroat competition, especially in the face of uh, the government's inability to manage the emerging dynamics. Well, joining us now to have a conversation around this is Professor Chidi Odinkalu, a lawyer, human rights advocate, and former chairman of the National Human Rights Commission. Welcome, uh, Professor. Good afternoon. Good af Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Now, Professor, let me just quote from your recent um, article uh, titled Nigerians' Population Productivity or Resolving Nigeria's Population Productivity Insecurity Problem. You said, as long as the dominant politicians choose to weaponize demographics without a plan for investing in productivity, for so long shall Nigeria know little peace. So maybe we should start from there. What do you mean by weaponizing demographics? Well, thank you. Thank you for asking that question. Um, essentially, we are in a country here in which government is committed to fighting symptoms rather than causes of insecurity. And the crisis of insecurity in Nigeria is a, basically a crisis of demand and supply. What do I mean? The supply of public goods, of governance capacities, is far outstripped by demand. And that, that dissonance between demand and supply is rising rather than falling. The leadership capacity to try and deal with it is falling rather than rising. And rather than try to deal with that, politicians are concentrating on winning, winning elections by hook or by crook. And as a result, dropping the ball on trying to address the causes. Uh, therefore, the reality is our insecurity is just beginning. Um, I, I, could, I could go into details, but essentially this is what it is. Uh, you see, in a country in which parts of the country uh, uh, have average fertility of about 8.3 per woman, um, and tax to GDP ratio, uh, is somewhere in the region of about 5% or less, you are not going to be getting out of insecurity in a haste. That essentially is what it is. All right. Um, you mentioned the fact that in your article, by the way, uh, Prof, that the Nigerian government and its infrastructure, especially in the area of security, has literally failed and not been able to cope with the mounting pressure that we are facing right now. Is that the reason why we find ourselves where we are, that the government has failed to own up to the fact that at the moment they have been overwhelmed by the myriads of security problems we face in Nigeria? Now, look, at, look at it this way, okay? As I speak to you, we cannot pay our teachers we are borrowing to pay government overheads and salaries. Debt is rising exponentially. We cannot build new schools. We cannot build new hospitals. We have to borrow to maintain our roads. Now, the average population growth rate in Nigeria is about 3.2% per annum. That adds up to about 6.3, 6.4 million people every year. Uh, basically, in about three years, you are adding close to 20 million people to your population. There are no new school capacities to, for training the kids that are coming along. Uh, by 2030, basically, we'll be adding about 67, 70 million people to the population. No new schools for them. No new hospitals for them. Infrastructure for them is creaking or breaking down. That means that we are going to either keep those kids out of school or we will have to put them in 
schools that are already over distended. Okay, Professor there are Chidi, no teachers Professor for them. Odin yes. Kalu, if you don't mind holding your thought there, we'll be back shortly to take it up where you left off. You're still watching Newsday and still continuing the conversation with Professor Chidi Odin Kalu with regards to Nigeria's oversized population and the challenges thereon. Uh, Professor, you were saying you were listing uh, the myriad of problems we face. But I just want to interject and just put this to you, that which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Because some have said that in spite of the fact that we have all these challenges, uh, insecurity tops the list. And then you mentioned shooting uh, the, the government's um, fall, failure in that they, shoot, they, they opt to shoot their way out of our problems. But then some would say that it's that inconsistency in not shooting their way out of the problem that is the problem, that sometimes they, they go with the, the stick and then they go with the carrot of rehabilitating um, bandits that is actually at the heart of our failure to deal with insecurity. What do you say to that? That's not the issue, with all due, with all due respect, okay? You want, now, by the way, a lot of the people you describe as bandits have helped the people ordering for them to be shot, to get to power. They have been recruited as thugs, as helpers, as ballot stuffers, at, uh, as fingerprint managers uh, to enable these people procure illegitimate electoral uh, outcomes, okay? Um, politicians have armed a lot of these young people with guns, uh, which were used to procure electoral outcomes. And so shooting them is destroying the evidence. It does not destroy the crime, okay? That's the problem here. Uh, and I'm not making this up. If you go to read the Galtimari report from 2011, which investigated Gaji Galtimari, having been a senior official of the Nigerian Intelligence Agency who led the investigation into the origins of Boko Haram, you will see that what I'm saying is actually in official government literature. Uh, or if you read the Turaki panel report from 2013, I'm not saying anything that is not in official government literature. Now, if you are shooting and liquidating these young people, you are not addressing the problem. You are destroying the evidence. That is my point. Now, the question is, are we willing to address the problem? If we want to address the problem, we've got to address population policy. We've got to address economic growth and capacity.